A ship as big as one man's courage. It was very impactful. A Vietnam vet who gave his life for his country. It's not just the war hero's legacy that lives on in the name of this ship. His spirit lives on in the crew. United States Marines head for security duty in South Vietnam. Almost exactly 50 years ago, Charleston native Ralph Johnson threw himself on a grenade during a mission in Vietnam to save his fellow Marines. He died instantly. Many sailors who've stepped foot aboard the future USS Ralph Johnson had never heard the story of bravery. Get it painted tomorrow. Get the decks painted. We'll be, we'll be set. It's a good job. But it hit home for Chief <laughs> Kenneth Slayton. My dad was a Vietnam vet, infantry in the Army. It's a very, very similar uh, background, and um, it seemed like it was a perfect uh, ship for me to go to and an opportunity to serve my country in, in the way I could, like he did. Um, you know, a smaller version of what he did. So it's Slayton's honor to ensure his crew puts the final touches on the Navy's latest destroyer. Degree out of here and let's get it as clean as possible. All right, good, good. It looks good, it looks good. We're very proud of the work that we put into it, and now we want to take it forward and show it off and show the people of Charleston what we're, what we're bringing to life for the Navy. It's no small feat to bring this boat to life. It took years to build piece by piece in a naval shipyard in Mississippi. And it was almost like a, you know, a bunch of kids playing with Legos. They would build a part, build a part in another section, they would build a part in another section, and then they put it all together to create a, a complete project. And it was, to me, it was remarkable. And he represents the crew. But as Commander Jason Patterson looks on from the bridge, he knows construction was only the first part. It's hard work to build a crew, so there's a substantial amount of training that goes into getting the crew ready for that initial taking custody and that first sail away. We're, uh, we're operating the ship at sea by ourselves. It takes pride and respect in oneself and the namesake. The key to a successful ship and a crew is taking ownership right from the start. So the work never stops, all in the name of Ralph Johnson. I've done a good job today, right? Everybody worked hard. We're gonna go a little bit longer here, and we're gonna scrub a few more decks. We're gonna sweep, get this thing looking good, and then uh, we're gonna be ready for uh, Charleston. Much of the crew has been with the ship for about two years now and took formal custody of the Arleigh Burke destroyer in December. It's a special type of ship supporting a broad range of naval needs. We provide things as far as ballistic missile defense. We also provide anti-piracy, anti-submarine warfare, anti-surface warfare. Equipped with new technology. This is a new weapon on board. It's actually got two guns. It's a 25 millimeter and a coaxial 240. They shoot together it's, uh, for small boat attacks. This is one of the first ships. Was it? And a small tight knit crew of only a few hundred. It's a hands on experience from the very beginning. It's very fast paced and it's a lot of work, but you can get involved. It's not a, you know, it's a smaller crew than a lot of ships. So you, they, it requires everybody to be involved to successfully complete the mission. Right now, that mission is Charleston. And at the end of a hard day's work, the crew relaxes here in the mess decks. This is where the crew eats. Um, this is also where they take time off, relax, watch movies. This is where they're, they take moments at the end of the work days. With Ralph watching over. We felt that it was appropriate here with them, them laughing and enjoying themselves and uh, capturing the moment and what the mess decks truly represents for, for our sailors. It's one of the only pictures taken of Ralph Johnson in Vietnam a tribute to their fellow comrade and where new sailors come to learn about the hero whose ship bears his name. For me personally, it's a privilege, ma'am, uh, being able to teach them uh, the sacrifice of a, a young human being that, that willingly gave his life uh, for his friends, his uh, fellow Marines, to explain to them that uh, our foundation is all the same uh, of, of taking care of each other, no matter where we're from. The tributes don't stop there. The ship's crest was designed by the crew. The light blue represents the Medal of Honor Ralph received. The Southern Cross comes from Ralph's Marine Corps Battalion crest. The dragons are a symbol of Vietnamese folklore, and the star above them represents the life he saved in Vietnam. This is the highlight of my career, and I think the rest of the crew, in being able to, uh, to take a ship to sea in, in, you know, in the name of Ralph Johnson, who's obviously a Charleston hero, and, uh, and now a Navy Marine Corps hero. First stop, 
Charleston to welcome this warship into service. Hey, will you lift it off that so it doesn't scrape that paint? Hey, walk it out, like walk it out with a few people. Just over 18 years ago, I left South Carolina to join the Navy and I didn't know where it would take me. And, uh, you know, now closing in on the end of my career, I'm pulling into my home state. I uh, have a lot of family members coming to see the commissioning, so it's a very proud moment for me. And a welcome back for the Johnson family. It's going to be a great moment. Here he is, Cleve. I found him. There's Ralph. It's been 50 years this month. This is the hardest month for Cleve. Always March. I mean, his whole persona changes a little bit in March. And I used to wonder why. I thought, what have I done? He seems a little on edge, edgy. And then as I've realized war comes home, and you learn to adapt to your new warrior. Since Cleve McCleary's life changed. We were out there by ourselves with all the enemy all around. The night on Hill 146 in Vietnam, when a young Marine from Charleston gave his life for his country, his brothers. I hate to lose Ralph, but if he had done it, I wouldn't be him. Um, did he want to do it? I don't know. He ended up on it, and I'm alive. I ought to have been trying to get the hang out of there. I'm not a hero. Ralph Johnson's a hero. He's on the grid eight. I'm beside the hill. So I know what I'd do. And we know what he did. McCleary was Johnson's lieutenant in his reconnaissance battalion, and the two quickly forged a bond over their southern roots. He talked Gullah and I talked Southern. We got along real well. Them Yankees, we couldn't understand anyway. And they, my Mexican on the radio, he didn't know what I was saying. He just made it up. See his weapon? McCleary and his wife, Dee, are in Charleston for the commissioning of the naval ship named in honor of Ralph, a man close to their heart. No greater love than to lay down your life for a friend. There is no greater love. And a good laugh, not far behind. Justin and uh, I, he's the only one I had. You ought to see, you ought to see him and me on Justin and I cook together, but no, nah, nobody would need him. You put all the sea rats in and think you're gonna come out with frog moose too, it don't work. <laughs> They're most excited though about getting the team back together to celebrate Ralph. It's the first time that we've all been together because we're there at different farms, you know, and it's the last time. We know that. A week of healing, hope, and honor. Ralph would be uh, embarrassed. He'd be shy. He, he would smile. He'd be happy. But it would, um, he'd be real embarrassed. But I'm sure he'd be proud of his city. And, and, and I thought that this morning, too. Texas, dude, we're coming in hot, hot through smoke. It didn't take long for crowds to circle. Was it intense? For history to come alive at the Vietnam experience at Patriots Point. You are right here, right? Yeah, it's just... A chance to learn history straight from our wounded warriors. I was all blown up, I wanted to die, and he wouldn't leave me. And hear stories of those who made the ultimate sacrifice. We all appreciate his sacrifice. He could have tried to save himself, but he didn't. Recon brother of ours who got the Congressional Medal of Honor on my 21st birthday. A celebration right, still today to of brotherhood. <laughs> <laughs> See these guys in person after all these years? It's a godsend to me. Sergeant Oscar Munoz was Lieutenant Cleve McClary's primary radio man. Newly engaged, Munoz should have been right by McClary's side the night Ralph Johnson was killed, but he was taken off the mission. He goes, uh, as a wedding gift, you're not going on the patrol. It still haunts him today. You're always going to have something because you always thought you could have done something to prevent it. Maybe you could have, maybe you couldn't have. It's hard to tell. The images. Cleve was on a gurney. Uh, I could see his arm that had been blown off. To this day, I just hear it. He looked with his one eye. He says, Mewen, man, I'm sorry I ruined, ruined your wedding plans. And knowing who was lost. When I met Ralph, I thought, you know, got to make sure this kid gets home. Didn't happen. Uh, you know, thanks to Ralph, three other guys survived. There's only four of us left for the commissioning of the Ralph Johnson that were on the hill with Ralph Johnson. Like Henry Covarrubios, who has shared those stories with the Johnson family. Beautiful family. Sister, Johnson told her that's all he wanted to be was a Marine, so he got his wish. And a band of brothers. You really can't put that into words because it's something 
I never really expected to happen. Like I said, some of these guys, I bet, uh, some of them were medevac out of Vietnam. I hadn't seen them since then. Back together. All we could do is grab each other, <laughs> hug each other up. It's in, you know, their faces don't go away. To bring their Marine home. And people see it and they go, oh, who's that young man in the dress blues? I said, Ralph Johnson. You know, proud to be his teammate. And here's your card back. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. Inside this Somerville trophy shop, Angie Locklear yeah. treats her customers like family. You've got one more box, Coach Cave. Especially the newest one. So this will be a very so unique plaque for the Ralph Johnson. Not just one, but 500. 500 somebodies is a pretty impressive, it's pretty um, heartfelt. For every plank owner, officer, and sponsor of the Navy's latest destroyer. Every one of them has an individual name, so it was it was a lot of a lot of individual spellings and names to get. Lots of work. This is where the magic happens. By hand. And we have a, an assembly line and then we would where have, you know, one person would set everything. the coins and one person would set the plate. Each plaque personalized. Everything is custom. We had boards custom made because this is not a standard size, if you will. We had plates obviously custom made, coins custom made, and then the boxes are even, even down to the boxes. With love and honor. My dad is retired Navy and we had two brothers going to Navy. As a family that's been from the military, we couldn't even begin to explain how deeply touched we are. The Locklears have made plank owner plaques for four other ships. They're all a little different. Of course, we always customize it with the silhouette of the actual ship. And some of them, it's been something as simple as a change of a, an antenna. Each time, they're boxing up a little piece of history for families to pass down to generations to come. It is humbling to know that we could possibly be hanging on somebody's wall for 30 to 40 years for their service to our country. And my father, after he passed, we passed, his plaques got passed down to family members and, and so forth. So it really is, it is heartfelt to be able to do what we do and to be able to do it for the military. Not just plaques. We actually like to say here we make memories. Working for you in Somerville, Alex Heaton, ABC News 4. It's been pretty interesting. We've watched it over there for several days now. The USS Ralph Johnson has put on more than just a show for Charleston. Quartermaster, hoist the colors and commission pennant. I, I wish I had had a chance to go aboard the Johnson. She's taken Hal Rigby for a trip down memory lane. I, I served out of Charleston here right out of college. and. Uh, we did a Westpac tour, which is the Pacific during the, the Vietnam area. Rigby is a docent at Patriots Point and knows all about the class of destroyers to which the USS Ralph Johnson belongs. It's very modern, very nice, very accommodating. It's a guided missile destroyer, a newer, more advanced version of the USS Laffey, which sits in the Charleston Harbor. It's like a 1937 Chevrolet compared to our new ships, be like a 2018 Corvette. The Laffey was commissioned in 1944. You know, back in World War II on this ship, didn't change much right on through the 70s. So there are major differences in terms of technology. Caesars talk about what it didn't have. Number one, there was never a computer on this ship. Weapon systems. Night and day. Uh, the weapons on this ship and the ships of this type, you know, they were uh, you know, powder charged. We had five inch 38 gun mounts, which would fire about nine miles. Today's weaponry is so far advanced, you can lock in on a target hundreds of miles out, push a button, and a missile will go out. Even down to how the ships are propelled. Look at the black box. It says we need to increase propeller speed to 206. This is a steam driven ship. We had boilers on board that created steam that turn turbines and turn, turn the propellers. The steam turbines right here, you have a high pressure turbine and a low pressure turbine. The Ralph Johnson has a gas turbine, making it more efficient. Always a good view from up here. And here's a look inside the Laffey's bridge. He had his charts, he had all the information in front of him, the radar lit off here. Small compared to this, the bridge of the USS Ralph Johnson, a ship that is more than 100 feet longer than the Laffey. You can pan over and see our beautiful Ralph Johnson. Despite all the differences, Rigby says some things never change. A sailor is a sailor. 
you know, you're on a ship and it floats in the water. Working for you in Mount Pleasant, Alex Heaton, ABC News 4.